My brothers, I greet you in the name of peace and the spirit of love. Brothers, this is the morning of our ordination. This morning, the CFC, our Committee for Change, is going to make a change for peace. Change is beautiful when it is a change for peace. And peace is beautiful when it is black peace. And we are beautiful when we are truly black. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You know, it's 7 o'clock and you haven't got this place open yet. Now listen, if you want a day's pay, you work for us. Or don't work if you don't want to. And how many times have I told you not to bring your friends around here? Peace, brothers. My father's manners will also change. When he comes to see how beautiful it is to be black, he'll change. Our peace. Brothers, show my father the sign. What does all that mean? It means that Willings College was founded for the black man exclusively. Now they're trying to open it up to white men. But well, we don't want Whitey, because there's no room for him. That's not for you to say. You've got no call. It is the duty of the Committee for Change to protest Whitey's outrages. Barry, you're not going to be satisfied until some cop busts your head wide open. If they try any of that, we got two 12-gauge change makers, baby. No, 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 man. We don't want to perforate them. We just don't want to matriculate them. <laughs> Give me the gun. Look out, old man. They're loaded. Don't do that, Daddy. Everybody stand still. Stay right where you are. Let's go in the wagon. In the wagon. Let's go. In the wagon? Yes, you're under arrest. Arrest for what? Illegal possession of sawed-off shotguns, a felony. Now, let's go. State Penitentiary. You're putting me on. I mean, you want it for what? Escape convict. 27 years. Daddy, that is the greatest thing you ever said to me since the day I was born. What? That they're going to send me back to a penitentiary to serve out a life sentence? That we're going to stop them from doing it to you. Daddy, we, the CFC, listen and believe. They used to be able to take a black man and do anything they wanted to him. But my Committee for Change is going to change all that, Daddy. Daddy, thanks to you. Eddie Cruz. The lawyer? How do you do, Mr. Cruz? Mr. Judd? And Mr. Judd is in town on a legal matter for Allison Oil, so uh, when I heard what happened to you this morning, why, 
first thing I did was to send the nearest lawyer over to get you out on bail, and the second was to ask Mr. Judd here if he'd take your case. Case? Yeah. Oh, you, you mean that sawed-off shotgun business? Yeah, well, of course. What else? I was thinking... I was thinking that's mighty nice of the company. Mr. Sims tells me that uh, you've been one of the company's most uh, respected dealers for 20 years, Mr. Cruz. You have a valuable image. Well, you know, that's true, J.D. That, that's why the company's behind you in this thing, 110%. With my son, Harry, too? Yeah, well, your son, uh, <laughs> he's something else again. Uh, frankly, the company is not that interested in his image. I don't like it much either. But that's my son, you know. If I know him, he probably wouldn't want a white lawyer. Uh, just uh, a few questions, Mr. Cruz. Did you uh, give your son permission to hold his committee meeting on these premises this morning? No. Or any other morning. Tell me how you happened to come into possession of these guns. Possession? I never did possess those guns. I'm just trying to take them away from those kids, that's all. Case dismissed. And you mean you'll take it and get it dismissed? Oh, I don't expect much trouble. Well, J.D., how's that for service? Fine. Just fine. But would he take my case if there was more to it? Like what? Uh, would you rather Mr. Sims stepped outside? No. No, let him hear. You know, it's funny. I've been shaking scared for 27 years this was going to come out. Now that it has, it's easy. They took my fingerprints at the police station, you know. When they run a check on me, they're going to find out I'm an escaped convict. Conviction of murder. Would you uh, care to tell me what the circumstances were? The circumstances were how I was driving his truck. A soldier stepped out on the road and I hit him and killed him. It was that simple. Yeah, there's a little more to it. Not much. 27 years ago, I was kind of a wild kid. Pretty much like my son Harry is now. Only for different reasons. And there was this girl I wanted to marry. I heard she was seeing someone else. So I asked about it. She admitted it. We had a spat and she ran away. I was working at the sawmill then. And I had this company truck with me. I was so riled up, I didn't go to work at all that day. And later on, the foreman come by, uh, Sam Haken, told me to get that truck back on up to the sawmill and pick up my pay, that I was fired. Yeah, after that, I wasn't in no hurry. So I stopped at Turnbull Corners and had myself a couple of drinks. You mean you got drunk? No. I had a couple of drinks but I was not drunk. I um, left the bar a little after dark. Hadn't gone but a half a mile. Then all of a sudden, this soldier boy stepped out in front of me. I hit him. It was a breath test or a blood alcohol test made on you? No. No test. You're saying it was a simple accident? It had to be an accident. I hadn't seen him until that second he stepped out in front of me. Then it was too late to stop the truck. Did you run? Uh, testify to this at your trial? No, I didn't testify to anything. This uh, lawyer they had, his name was Fletcher. He, he wouldn't put me on the stand. And the jury found you guilty of murder on those facts? Oh, they put it into the second degree. But they still sent me to prison for life. After a while, I decided to bust out of there. You know, I never got over the surprise of making it out of the state. You see, it doesn't surprise me now that they're going to send me back. Well, now, J.D., you may not be surprised. I would suggest that nobody be too sure that anybody's going to send Mr. Cruz anywhere just yet. Before that happens, there has to be an extradition hearing to determine whether the governor of this state wants to hand him over to the state he came from. No, but doesn't the governor pretty well have to extradite him? Ordinarily, yes, but the laws of this state give the governor discretionary power to uh, not extradite if he feels that the ends of justice would not be served. And, uh, Mr. Cruz, 
When a man spends the last 20 years as a responsible and respected member of the community, I don't know what just purpose is served by shipping him off to prison. No, don't do that to me. I mean, they can have all the hands they want, but don't get my hopes up for nothing. Don't you know, Mr. Judd? Don't you really know? All they have to do is see what I am. Send me back. No, I don't know anything of the sort. Walter, I want to meet with Mr. Cruz tomorrow morning in your office to work this thing out in detail. In, uh, in my office? Excuse me, that's a customer I shouldn't keep waiting. I've already kept him waiting 27 years. Katie Cruz? Yes. I have a fugitive warrant signed by Judge Thomas C. Fishback for the arrest of J.D. Cruz, also known as J.T. Conger. Look, can you give me a second? Mr. Sims, would you lock up on me, please? in one day, and I don't even know how the company's going to take it. Now, what more do you want? He's being released now. I want to know what you're going to say to him when my associate brings him down here. Well, I could express a little unhappiness on the part of the company. I mean, having, uh, having discovered that, well, for one, that a franchise dealer is a convicted criminal, and two, that his son is the worst kind of black militant troublemaker. J.D. didn't know what his son was up to. Oh, how do you know what J.D. knew? I, I never know what they're thinking anyway. Who are they? Well, uh, you know. I see. Now, let me ask you this. Why did you engage me to represent J.D. Cruz in the first place? Because I believe the man was entitled to the company's support. Oh, come on, then, Walter. That gun charge would have practically dropped itself. You were pulling a publicity stunt to build up Allison's image in the eyes of the Negro motoring public, which buys gas and oil. But I was still trying to help the man. I? Is it still the same man? For the same 20 years of faithful service to his credit? No, sir, not exactly. He is now a, an escaped convict. Mr. Sims, that man ran away from what had to be an unjust sentence. But the killing of that soldier could have been a simple accident. Oh. All right, at its very worst, if the driver were blind drunk, it was involuntary manslaughter, which means a couple of years in prison. Can't you see that it was that life sentence that made him into a fugitive? Mr. Judd, Allison is in the oil business. All right. If it was good business to get me on the case, how will it be to try and get me off? Oh, now, now wait a minute. The, the company may be perfectly willing to go along with it. All I said was that I don't know what they want to do. Why not? Can't you tell what they're thinking? All right, where's my father? Well, I heard you were having him sprung. Are you, or do we have to get him out ourselves? You don't have to do a thing, Harry. Your father's being released on bail. And uh, this is Mr. Judd who arranged it. Well, Mr. Judd, sir. What else are you arranging for my father? Besides that, he spent the rest of his life in prison. A hearing to try and prevent that. Tomorrow morning, your father's case goes before State Secretary Betzel, who handles pardons and extraditions for the governor. Mr. Judd, my father's 45 years old. If they send him back on any kind of life sentence, he won't live long enough to make parole. What I mean is, suppose the hearing goes against him. Harry, all I can guarantee you is that we'll do our best. Well, then, suppose you go back down south, okay? I mean, Texas is the south, right? Well, you go home and leave it to me to help my father. Harry! For once in your life, will you keep your mouth shut? You trust him? Of course I do. The man is my lawyer. You trust him to do any better by you than those men that railroaded you into a murder conviction. Tell me, what has he got to do with those men who did that? Tell me he's not the same color. Harry, if you really want to help your father, you go up in that station so I can go home and get some rest. But you won't do that, will you? 
I don't know why you say that, Daddy. Of course I will. I'm so worried about him. He can make trouble for himself one day. I'm worried about the trouble he can make for you. How much trouble can he make between now and tomorrow morning? Black militants threaten to picket state office building. Issue is extradition of Negro garage owner. Or is the real issue whether a little fish can get big in a hurry by swallowing his own father? I don't know what you're saying. You know exactly what I'm saying. You're using your father as a pawn. And the name of the game is how to build the committee for change into something from nothing overnight. I like your metaphor. He is a pawn, my father. A black pawn. And he's been used all his life by the white pieces. Now, if I'm using him, at least you'll be on the right side. Harry, he will be on the wrong side of the prison bars. I don't think so. I think my father's going to be free. And what's bugging you is that his freedom will be the doing of the Committee for Change, not yours. Enough to drive a white knight like you crazy. Mm, and what happens if he isn't freed? Then when they take him back to prison, can we call that your doing too, not ours? Oh, no way. Oh, well, that's nice. Then, then all we can do is lose. How about that? Harry, the governor of this state is not about to be publicly intimidated. Now, you can only succeed in forcing your father's extradition. Distortion of the realities there. Extradition of a black man is all but automatic. But we've got a case, and the oil company is backing it with their records. It is a good case to show that your father has been rehabilitated. From what? My daddy wasn't bad to begin with. He's a non-regenerate sweetie, my daddy is. Is that why you're gonna sacrifice him? Now, don't give me that, friend. I know what my daddy is and what he isn't, and just where he leaves off and I begin. And when he thinks black, I run with him. When he thinks white, I run the other way. Now, I'm not out to hurt him. I'm out to save his black soul. The expense of his body. Now, let's get one thing very straight. Whatever happens in this white society, it's Whitey's fault, not ours. Now, if we break any heads down there in the morning, it won't be because I hate my father, but because I love him. And in my love, I'm showing him how much the black race wants him for its own. I put together a force, a power. You're afraid of that power. Or else you wouldn't be here talking, would you? Let the record show that the pardons and extradition secretary has received in testimony and has duly noted 34 character depositions for the defendant, including depositions from the president of Allison Oil Company. Objection, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Letter. Now, the word defendant seems inapplicable. Mr. Cruz, or to use his real name, Mr. Conger, is a convicted murderer and an escaped convict. Now, all the character statements in the world can't change the fact that his defendant days are over. Mr. Jack. If uh, Mr. Letterer wants to do battle on semantics, I'll join it. Though it seems unimportant. We're dealing with a man's freedom. I agree. Overruled. These depositions are impressive. Mr. Secretary, the state has nothing to say in rebuttal to them. Now, if Mr. Judd wishes to establish a case for an individual's rehabilitation, well, I suggest he take that case to the state which originally convicted and sentenced that individual. It is, in the most simplistic terms, not our problem. However, Mr. Secretary, that is not to imply that this situation has left our state entirely devoid of problems. Now, Mr. Judd will doubtless be quoting a phrase from our Constitution which states that our governor may refuse to extradite when he becomes convinced that the ends of justice will be defeated by such action. Well, I submit, Mr. Secretary, that the governor will wish to weigh his action in terms of what acts others are committing at this moment. Free Jaden! Yeah. Let our people go! Buzz off, Leonard! Yeah, free Jaden! Now, yeah. get us Jaden! 
Well, Mr. Secretary, no reasonable man can deny that there are things to be overcome. But we are now being asked to overcome law itself. Now, if we heed these violent voices outside, if the governor of this state feels so threatened by them that he allows a convicted murderer and escaped convict to remain free, then we have indeed overcome law to the point of anarchy. And in anarchy, Mr. Secretary, there are no ends of justice. It does not exist. The governor signed the extradition order. He did? I'm sorry. The way I've been living for the last 20 years didn't mean a thing to him. Oh, I think it did, J.D. But he took a very strict view of the extradition statutes. This is no more than I expect. We'll go back with you, J.D., Ben and I, and Allison Oil Company, which may help. We take the position that you were wrongfully convicted, and we intend to fight that. I sure appreciate that. But you ain't going back in that deal with me, are you? Oh, well, I came awfully close to telling him that it was Harry. That... I mean, Harry wanted him extradited. You weren't alone. No, oh, although our whole case against extradition was a long shot. Of course. Are you saying that you expected to go back to J.D.'s home state and fight the original conviction? Oh, yeah. But does it occur to you that Harry and his committee for making trouble may just come right along with us and raise all the militant black hell they can? Occur to me? I guarantee it. <laughs> Heavy? You know, I've been up in state capital too long, John. I've forgotten what a terrible ordeal a widow dance, fried chicken, and iced tea can be. May I ask what you're doing, sitting here all by yourself? Oh, just thinking. Thinking about Clinton Judd? Well, I'll tell you, Duane, I told the voters of this county when I was up for re-election with a sharp district attorney, I'd make them. I told the attorney general up the capital with a sharp assistant he has in you. Such that I needed to borrow you for the occasion. So why worry about Clinton Judge? Well, he'll be working from a 27-year-old trial transcript. That isn't going to be easy. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do it fast. He doesn't want that CFC bunch down here any more than we do. My guess is that he'll go for a writ based on the lack of effective counsel. No, sir. He'll go for a writ based on Negro exclusion from juries 27 years ago. Well, awful job to prove exclusion. I say counsel. Exclusion. Bet. Done. Your Honor, since this is the court of original jurisdiction in the case of my client, J.T. Conger, also known as J.T. Cruz, I respectfully ask that a writ of habeas corpus be issued. Based on? Based on the fact that 27 years ago in this jurisdiction, Negroes called for jury duty were systematically excluded from all jury panels. Is that your contention? It is, Your Honor. The court assumes that you have a, a transcript of the proceeding. No, Your Honor. But the court can take judicial notice of the fact that such transcripts are not available because no minutes are normally taken. Such judicial notice as the court sees fit to take will be at its own discretion. You have no proof to support your motion? No, Your Honor. Motion denied. Defense then petitions the court for a writ of habeas corpus based on the denial of the right to effective counsel. Denied. Defense begs the court to consider a motion for a common writ of error based on the fact that the prima facie evidence supported at most a charge of manslaughter. Denied failure of jurisdiction. Touched all bases, Mr. Judge? I never left home. The prisoner will be remanded to the custody of the warden of the state prison 
where he will begin serving the remainder of his sentence at once. Your Honor, may I have a stay of that order? Your reasons? To give me time to confer with my client, to make investigations, and to gather evidence in support of a motion for a new trial. We have no wish to seem vindictive, Mr. Judge. I'll grant your stay. Is a week long enough for you? I hope so, Your Honor. Thank you. The prisoner will remain in the county jail under the custody of the sheriff for one week. This court is adjourned. Mr. Bellat? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, indeed. Mr. Judd, when we get together to talk, we try to do it at my house. It's just the kind of place you can loosen your shoes a bit. I hope you'll join us for a drink. Well, just one. Mr. Judd, there isn't a lawyer here that would claim in every case involving indigent Negroes, justice was done. That's true in this state. And it's true in every other state. Granted. And by the same token, you wouldn't have us, I feel sure, throw open the jails and retry everybody who claimed he was wrongfully convicted. Yes, if they have viable cause, I would. My client has viable cause. I'll start with him. Let's talk about something else, Mr. Judd. Violence. Or I should say the uh, threat of violence. Now, we haven't threatened you, but uh, you've threatened us. I wasn't aware of that. You're not aware of the violence being threatened by your client, J.D. Cruz, by his son, Harry Cruz? My client has done everything he possibly could to keep his son out of this. Let him do more, Mr. Judge. Let him make sure that son Harry doesn't bring his CFC bunch in here. In which case, it just might be possible that we could do something for your client. Gentlemen, why don't we lay it on the line? All right. Now, your appeals procedure can take forever and may get you nowhere. If you will assure us that the CFC brand of violence will be kept out of here, then we can assure you that your client will do a minimum time in the penitentiary. What is minimum? Six, seven months till things simmer down, and then? Then? Parole would not be out of reach. Well, now, you don't seem very pleased, Mr. Judd. Well, I was just thinking that everyone talks about abhorring violence, but they respect it. Now, if I advise my client to go along with what you've proposed, then so do I. But you will so advise him, won't you, Mr. Judd? You mean, do we have a gentleman's agreement? Daddy, tell him no. You don't want their deal. It is wrong. It is a cop-out. It's abject surrender. Uh, what were you saying, Harry? I, uh, I'm afraid I was listening. All right. One. You're an innocent man involved in an accident, and still you've got to go back to prison. Two, you'll never be cleared, exonerated. You'll only be paroled, like a common criminal. Three, the white men say six or seven months. But what is the guarantee they'll keep their word? I don't like the deal either, J.D. For some of those reasons, and also for others. I wish I could advise you to turn it down. As your lawyer, I've got to be practical in your interest. And I believe the authorities will keep their word. Then you say accept it. He says, put your trust in Whitey. Same Whitey who put you in jail unjustly. Who says your 27 years of honest work mean nothing. Back off there, Harry. These are our friends. Daddy, our white friends are as bad for us as our white enemies, or worse. Because our white friends have the basic white middle class view of the world. Which is the highest good for the black man is to be blended into a sick white society. Harry, we all live in the same society. What do you propose to do? Destroy it? Yes. Destroy it. And on the ashes, build a better one. What's the evidence that you can build anything? I mean, what are you showing now except that you and your CFC can destroy? Let my father choose between us. I have to look at it this way. Am I any better off now than I was before they brought me back here? Facing six, seven months in prison instead of the rest of your life? Yes. Right. I am better off. I want you to know I sure appreciate what you've done for me. But how does this happen? Is it because the white man respects me? No. Does he respect the decent way I've been living? No. And you 
know he doesn't respect you for what you've been trying to do for me. Now, I just heard of a life sentence chopped down to six months. Because my son, Harry, the trouble he and his little committee can make hits them harder than all your fine words. And I ask you, Mr. Judd, shouldn't I finally, after maybe I've been wrong so many years, shouldn't I finally respect my son? Are you saying you refuse the deal? That's correct. I refuse. Which leaves us no choice except to do what should have been done 27 years ago. That's go into court and prove your innocence. And that's what we'll do, Jake. We have one week. Uh, excuse me, I don't think you quite understood what my father was saying. He was saying he no longer gives a damn what you do. Right? That's very interesting about your recipe. And I hope Mr. Fletcher bags a limit, too. But if you'll just try to remember when he gets back from hunting that he has an appointment this afternoon with Clinton Judd. Five o'clock, that's right. Well, thank you, Mrs. Fletcher. Bye. Fletcher's out hunting? At 82. He's out hunting snipe. He likes curried snipe. I wish he'd gone snipe hunting the day he defended J.D. He probably did. That trial couldn't have lasted two whole hours, including the ten minutes the jury was out. And for all their haste, they did a clean job. Why not? Baby wasn't tried, he was processed. Twenty-seven years ago, when one Negro killed another, they just processed a survivor. No cross-examination, whatever. The idea of an autopsy wasn't even mentioned. Which leaves us where? Hips deep in the merits, Counselor. In a swamp they call the inherent justice of our client's cause. Funny, there, was, there wasn't any mention of any. Merits or swamp? Oh, I toss it. Oh, why is that funny if none was performed? I'm, I'm trying to remember. It, it seems to me that when I was in the service, in any non-combat connected death, an autopsy was a matter of course. And it occurs to me that McAllister, uh, that was the soldier J.D. ran over, he was stationed at Fort Stoddard just down the road a piece. You think they still have records from 27 years ago? Well, I know the Army, they still have records from the year one. Actually, there's a very detailed autopsy report. I'm familiar with the case. Oh, you are? Yes, sir. Because we brought a battalion combat team of airborne troops out here. A unit just finished being engaged in riot control training on account of the tense situation involving your client. Mm -hmm. You have no idea of the paperwork involved moving a battalion combat team from point A to point B. But on the other hand, it's paperwork you've come out here to see, and here you are. This is the 820-deuce-13 personnel file, Mr. Caldwell. Thank you. And since we did discover we have an autopsy report, this report is it. Mr. Thank you. Sir. May I uh, ask a question? What are you gentlemen looking for? To tell you the truth, we don't know. There's nothing much here. What is Class II personnel? That's the way the Army used to designate uh, colored soldiers. And how do they designate them now? They don't. You see anything there, Clint? Are you ready for this? His blood alcohol level at the time of death was 0 0.21. 21? What's uh, that mean? Well, it means that the dead man was dead drunk. When a drunk steps out into the road in front of an oncoming vehicle, in most jurisdictions, the driver isn't even held. Now we have got new evidence. Of the finest kind, exchangeable for a writ of quorum nobis in any appellate division in the country. Is that going to get your man out of jail? You bet your sweet stripes it is. A new trial will be automatic. Thank you. Oh, 
Mr. Fletcher? Mr. Judge, you know what a chance you take when you keep me waiting? I'm 82 years old. You certainly don't look it. Don't patronize me, son. You know, I've drunk whiskey, smoked tobacco, and chased women all my life. I know what I look like. A couple of other things I know also. One, I never heard of an army autopsy in the case of the late Private McAllister. Two, it wouldn't have made a better difference if I had. Well, it'll make a great difference now because my associate is on his way to the state Supreme Court with a petition for a writ of quorum nobis. Quorum nobis. Admire your style, Mr. Judd. Quorum nobis is older than I am. But a little more effective, I hope. I see. So you think I mishandled the case? Mr. Fletcher, why didn't you try to get the prosecution to accept the plea of manslaughter? Now, how do you know I didn't? Suppose I was to tell you that 27 years ago, a jury in this part of the country would send a Negro to the electric chair on the slightest reasonable doubt that he wasn't innocent. Yes, I know. And suppose I was to tell you that the state had a pretty good case against your client, our client, for first-degree murder. Oh, I try to get him to change the charge to manslaughter. John Belknap's father and I went round and round outside the courthouse, but he just wouldn't agree. So I accepted a murder two charge to keep our man alive. What is the evidence of murder one? Client ever tell you that the woman he'd taken up with was playing around? Yes, he did. Ever tell you that the man she was playing around with was McAllister, fella he killed? No. Now, you see, I couldn't even make out a case of coincidence. Prosecution had witnesses who saw McAllister step into the road, raise his hand to stop the truck as it came up and killed him. J.D. never, never told me that. So it's not quite what you thought. Innocent black man, a cruel white man. Not quite so simple, is it, Mr. Judd? The girl's name was Levin. We'd been going together about three months when I begun to see that there was somebody else around. Like most any other young man, I thought about going out and finding out who he was and stomping him down. So. But I never did. Why? No reason a jury or anybody else is ever going to believe. Levisee was real young. She liked the bright and jingly things all children like. If I was to go out and hurt this man, whoever he was, it'd be like telling that child she couldn't have candy anymore. Was that your only reason? No. That was the reason for her. I had another reason. I didn't want to know who it was because I didn't want those pictures in my head. So I didn't know McAllister's name, even that he was a soldier, or any other thing about him because I never asked. And I never asked because I didn't want to know. Now, you got a white jury going to believe that? Not at the time you were convicted. Not then. And not now. J.D., you've got to be wrong about that. I do. So you say. But I'm glad I don't have to go before another jury and find out again. Well, you may. That writ that Ben obtained automatically calls for a new trial. Of course, we can hope the prosecution will just let a 27-year-old case drop. But if not... You will have to go before a jury again. And lose again. J.D., things have changed. The law has changed. Oh, yes. There have been some changes. I can now ride in the front of some buses, eat at some lunch counters. My son can even work in some department stores. But I'm a black man. Every time a white man looks at me, that's all he sees. That hasn't changed. Let's make a deal. I won't discriminate against you for your color if you won't discriminate against me for mine. No deals. No deals of any kind, particularly. Not that one. Right, Daddy? I don't know, Harry. The man's got me a new writ. I heard. Mr. Associate Whitey came and told me all about it. Harry, what this writ means is that our society is not as sick as we may sometimes think that our law does function, however clumsily, that under the law there is justice for all, even if we sometimes have to show superhuman patience. Now, Harry, if your father and you will bear with us, he will be free. He's trying for me, son. 
I didn't think he'd get this far. I have my CFC people coming to town tomorrow. Will my father be free by tomorrow? Well, I can't promise it by tomorrow. Your week is up tomorrow. Harry, we just got the writ signed tonight. There are certain details I have to take up with the... No the details! Letter. My people are coming here by the hundreds. My people are coming by the thousands. Don't tell us about details. My father walks out of here absolutely free and clear tomorrow or this whole place goes up. The only time I've ever seen one of these in my life was when I tried to use one at a mock trial in law school. And he lost the case. I did for a fact. Well, I didn't lose mine. No, sir, you didn't. Mr. Belknap, you don't want to go for another trial, do you? No, sir, we do not. I didn't think you would. I took the liberty of stopping by your office on the way over here and picking up a release order for my client. If you'll just sign it, I can get him out of jail. You shouldn't have gone to all that trouble, Mr. Judge, especially when I've already done it for you. Oh. Mr. Judd, has it ever occurred to you what would happen if we did order his immediate release? Well, for openers, you'd have the CFC out of town. And then you could issue orders for that uh, airborne battalion at Stoddard to relax. Well, that'd be one of the first things that would happen all right enough. But uh, we're more concerned about something a little later on than that. Come on, gentlemen. I've got a client in jail who doesn't belong there. Well, doesn't he? Now, didn't he escape from prison? Which is in itself a felony. All right, what do you want? Mr. Judd, we want a stipulation. A simple statement, that is, wherein your client affirms that this state had reasonable cause to arrest and try him in the first place. Meaning that he will never be able to sue this state for false arrest. Are you serious? Why not? In my considered opinion as a lawyer, J.D. Cruz could never sue this state. He wouldn't have any case at all. Well, that's my opinion, too. Well, if you're worried about a nuisance lawsuit, I'm sure J.D. would never even think of it. We believe you. Well, then what can you possibly accomplish by this insulting piece of paper you want him to sign? Except saving face. Well, you could put it that way. Or you could say that this sovereign state wants it very clear it will not knuckle under to a Negro mob. What can I say to the one Negro this is all about? Shall I tell him Whitey knows he's wronged you and Whitey's law orders him to right that wrong? That still Whitey will not set you free unless he can put you in your place? Give him the release order. Uh, you will note that all this does is release him uh, in your custody, of course, until 6 o'clock this evening. We thought it might be more comfortable for you if you could talk to him about this in your hotel room, as opposed to the jail. Oh, that's a nice touch. Give him a little taste of freedom while he thinks about signing. Isn't it, though? Attention, please. Attention, please. This assembly is declared illegal. This is an illegal assembly. All persons in this area will leave immediately. If you do not leave, you will be arrested. I repeat, 
This is an illegal assembly. All persons in this area will leave immediately, or you will be arrested. So there it is, I J.D. You sign a paper for them. This is an they illegal sign assembly. Them. And if I don't sign, they'll send me back to jail. They'll be sending a couple of detectives to re-arrest you if you haven't signed by six o'clock. You sure that a couple will be enough? Relax, you will get your chance. By six o'clock. I'm not even sure we have that long. How is it out there, Ben? I wouldn't take odds either way. Just be really proud of yourself. Put it this way. I'm very proud of them. I repeat, this assembly is declared illegal. This is an illegal assembly. All persons in this area will leave immediately. If you do not leave, you will be arrested. Back to jail, because I escaped. That's right. Until your new trial in the matter of McAllister's death. Naturally, I'll be found guilty. Not necessarily. We've got a good defense. We? You mean you're going to stick? That's right. For how long? Until he felt that justice had been done. Justice put me in prison once. It'll sure do it again. Katie, why won't you believe the times change? Fletcher, whether he was right or wrong, felt he had to defend you the way he did to save you from the electric chair. Well, I wouldn't have to worry about that. Daddy, they talk about justice. Let them show how there's justice in this piece of paper. Will you show me how it's outside there. Daddy, look at me. Please. If you sign that paper, you'll be admitting that everything the state did to you was right and everything you did was wrong. They owe you, Daddy. Don't let them put you down like a nigger. They took away 27 years of your right to, to dignity. They owe you for that. And I didn't know what you were afraid of. So I thought you were just an Uncle Tom, and I was ashamed of you. Daddy, I was ashamed of you, and I was all you had. I had to go out and search in books looking for other black men to be proud of. They owe you for that, Daddy. They owe you, they owe me, they owe every black man that ever lived. There's truth in what my boy says. Of course there is. And you have every right not to sign that stipulation. But there are times when it's not enough to be right. And there are debts that profits no one to collect. Tell me this. In what coin do you want to be paid? In blood? In tears? In hate? Everlasting hatred between black and white? J.D., I've got 34 sworn statements saying you're a better man than that. This assembly is declared illegal. This is an illegal assembly. All persons in this area will leave immediately. It's six o'clock. Speak to my son alone. Please. Now look here, Harry. This is what we're up against. You got a group of white people out there. They won't think this hating business through. They won't! And you got a black group out there, and they ain't thinking either. Now you tell me what's gonna happen to this country and all the people in it if somebody doesn't start thinking. Hey, I have that pin, please. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Harry, 
tell me the truth. Aren't you glad nobody's getting hurt? Yes, Daddy. I don't believe it's a good thing for us, but all right. I'm glad. Why isn't it a good thing that nobody's getting hurt? Because this way it's going to take another hundred years to accomplish what we need. What can I say? There have to be too many decent, intelligent people to let it take another hundred years. Well, one day and one night at a time. Where do I stay tonight? Wherever you like. Can I stay in this motel? All right, we'll damn soon find out. <laughs> Thank you. 